ghosts, demons, or something else entirely. Tonight, we will be exploring five true creepy encounters with shadow people. Welcome back to Papa Scares Horror Stories. What do you think shadow people are? Please leave a comment below. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. So please sit back, relax, and let's begin. The Shadow Figure at the Park Hi everyone, here is another weird experience that happened when I was staying at the apartment where other strange things have happened to me. See previous posting. Once again, I lived at this apartment over five years ago. This experience I actually shared with an old friend of mine who was staying with me for a week. This didn't just happen to me, which actually made it a little less scary for me, since usually stuff would happen only when I was alone. My friend, who I will call L for privacy, had come over during his vacation time from work and decided to stay with me. He was living in a different state at the time. He would visit with his family during the day, then come back to the apartment at night to sleep. Towards the middle of the week, I finally had a day off from work the next day, and we agreed to hang out that night. He picked me up at my job after work. This was around almost 10pm, and we picked up some takeout and drove to the small park in my apartment complex to eat. We walked over to one of the two picnic tables that were at this park. We were there for maybe an hour just eating our food, reminiscing about old times and just joking around and having a good time. Suddenly. I felt some really heavy energy in the atmosphere. It was a familiar but still creepy as hell feeling. I kind of froze up and got really quiet and had the urge to get up and look around. I ignored what I was feeling and I stayed sitting at the table. Al was now giving me a funny look. He asked me if I was okay and I told him yes. I was starting to get used to this stuff just randomly happening, and I didn't want to make a big deal about it to my friend. I then felt like someone was staring at me from a distance, and I got chills up and down my arms. Apparently my friend had some sort of strange feeling too, because I saw him slightly jump up in his seat at the same time that I got this feeling. We looked at each other and were quiet for a few seconds. Then he asked me if I all of a sudden felt cold. I told him yes, I did, and then told him we should go back to the apartment. We got up and started picking up our trash. I walked away from the picnic table and went over to the trash bin, which was to my right, near the sidewalk. I turned around and I see my friend had stopped picking up his trash since he was answering a text message on his phone. Well, right behind him, on the second picnic table, was a shadow figure sitting at the table. I froze and was completely getting chills all over. I automatically assumed, because of my sensitivity to these things, that I was the only one who could see it. My friend then noticed that I was staring behind him, and he turned around. My friend then jumped back, dropping his phone in the process, and ran over to where I was in a panic. I asked him in a whisper if he could see it, and he whispered back to me, Holy shit, is that real? I told him I could see it clear as day. We both froze up and stood there, super quiet while this shadow just sat there not moving at all. This figure had no discernible shape. It was not in a shape of a person or anything. It was just a round black shadow that only had shoulders and a head. As I was staring at it, I started to get a sick feeling in my stomach and I started to pray silently in my head that this thing would go away. 
Suddenly, it just randomly vanished. I swear, I must have been sitting there for the longest two to three minutes of my life. As soon as it vanished, we both ran straight to my friend's rental car, with him briefly stopping to grab his phone, jumped into the car and locked the doors. Al started the car, and as he was starting to back up out of the parking space, we both heard two bangs on the hood of his car. We screamed and he literally did almost a burnout as he drove away from the park area. He drove fast as hell to where my apartment building was, parking in the first guest parking he saw. We then both literally ran like hell straight to my apartment. Eventually, after a long while, we both managed to calm down and talk about what happened. I explained to him the stuff that has happened to me since I moved to the apartment. He was completely freaked out and told me to come stay with him at his family's house because he did not feel safe me staying there alone. I explained to him it didn't matter. This stuff happens to me all the time at random places and it doesn't matter where I go. After a while of him trying to convince me, I agreed and we stayed at his family's house for the rest of that week. Obviously, I had to come back to my apartment after he left. He felt really sympathetic towards me and was genuinely afraid for me. He still lives in another state and calls me every once in a while to check up on me. I, of course, avoided that little park in the apartment complex, like the plague after that. Kid saw something. Shadow person? My son is a teenager now, but he'll occasionally ask if I remember when he saw the shadows and the glowing man. This started when he was about three. He'd start crying or yelling for me at night, and when I would check on him, he told me that there was a black, watery swirl above his bed, and it was scaring him. After a few times, he said there was a glowing man in the corner, keeping the black water from hurting him. This went on for ages. By the time he was in early elementary, he was scared of the shadow man in the hallway that would look into his room at night. He described him as very tall, with the shape of a hat on his head and red eyes. One night he was spending the night with his cousin, and my brother and sister-in-law informed me that he was terrified of the hallway. He kept telling them the shadow man was there. I'd say he was seven at the time. A friend of mine contacted someone for me and gave me a prayer, I guess that's what it was, to say with him in his room. Since then, he didn't mention it as much. I'm not particularly religious, so I thought this was bogus, but either it worked or my son is a prime example of placebo effect. Like I said, he will bring it up once in a while. But for the most part, it's in the past. He did Google shadow people and swears that's what the guy in the hallway was. I'd like to also add that my mum refused to sleep upstairs when she visited. Once when she was asleep up there, she said she heard me coming up the stairs and then stop outside her bedroom door. She apparently called it for me then started scolding me for scaring her. She got up to see and I wasn't there. She went into my room and saw me and my husband sound asleep. This was probably 10 to 12 years ago. She maintained this story until her dying breath. My experience with shadow people. I'll preface this post by saying I've enjoyed reading the posts here lately, as I feel they confirm I'm not crazy. I've always had an interest in the supernatural, perhaps because I like a good scare, but also because it confirms what I already know, that there are unexplainable things out in this crazy world of ours. The events I will describe in this post occurred from around ages 9 
to 19 when I moved out as soon as I could from my parents' home. I didn't move out because I had disagreements or arguments with my parents, aside from their few hormonal teenage years. For the most part, we had a great relationship. I could talk about almost anything with my parents and them me. I especially have a strong bond with my mother because my father worked hours away most of my life and we would spend hours sharing our paranormal experiences with each other. I have no recollection of anything remotely paranormal until my family decided to move to a rural town in Georgia when I was around nine. Keep in mind, I had much fresher memories in the past, but it's been around five years since I moved out and these experiences were a normal occurrence for 10 years of my life. I won't say there ever were routine, as I was always terrified of seeing the shadow people, but it became something I routinely expected and feared. Apologies for the long backstory, but I feel it better sets the stage for my post, and these encounters are something I have not shared, aside from a few close friends and family. The first encounter I had with the shadow people was completely unexpected and completely caught me off guard. I was around nine and was helping my mum with laundry. It was midday and a normal sunny day. Totally not the setting for anything scary. The laundry room was off a main hallway that ran from two bedrooms in the back of the house which contained my bedroom and my brother's bedroom and led to the living room with the kitchen and dining room jutting off of it, as well as an extra entertainment room, eventually ending in my parents' room, which had its own master bathroom. I had a basket full of laundry, about to bring it to my mother so we could fold it, when, as I began to step into the main hallway, a black mass ran right in front of me. It was black and a blur. It seemed to run extremely fast in front of me, and into the wall at the end of the hall. I was shaken up, but just explained it to my mum, who listened attentively, and reassured me it was probably just my imagination. A few days later, I was brushing my teeth and getting ready for bed, when I put my toothbrush down and turned only to find a black figure staring at me. We were eye to eye, and I was petrified. It disappeared after a few seconds, but it felt like an eternity. I remember feeling an oppressive feeling in my room constantly. It was like, instinctively I knew someone was watching me. I remember playing hide and seek with my brother for maybe 20 minutes max before the feeling of being watched was just too much and I'd give up and rejoin him so I didn't feel as scared. I would hear my mother calling and would get up to answer her and she would tell me she didn't call me and we'd laugh it off. I remember one night, waking up to get a glass of water and seeing my brother. I called his name because I was feeling scared, and having a companion on this late night endeavour would be comforting. My brother just kept walking. I thought he didn't hear me, so I called his name again and reached out for his shoulder. He turned around and it wasn't him. It looked identical but it wasn't. I don't remember what set me off to the fact that it wasn't him. Maybe it was the eyes or the face. It was so long ago that I just remember it happening and then it disappeared. I ran to our shared room where my brother was asleep. I confided in my mother who mentioned early in the mornings when she was making coffee and getting ready for our morning routine she would occasionally hear the sounds of children playing and hiding and would call out our names to no response. She was very supportive and firmly believed in the supernatural. The years that followed were full of short sightings of shadow people on and off. My mother and I would collaborate our stories. I had moved back into my old room and my brother his by this point and the oppressive feeling was just a part of life. My father even told stories of seeing a man in their room at night, but he was a very skeptical man and would only tell my mum vague details and then quickly state he didn't remember what she was talking about. We'd occasionally hear footsteps 
and what sounded like something heavy smashing into the back end of our house and see figures but I feel like the shadow people either slowed down or my memories faded because the occurrences were so normal. That was until my memory of them resumes and is much worse. The shadow people I would see were much taller. My mum and I noted that perhaps they were in some sort of hibernation, soaking up negative emotions because the previous shadow people were more akin to the size of children. The oppressive feeling was back and much worse, and I began to have violent nightmares. I would dream of a black being on my ceiling attacking me, attacking my dog. I began to see the beings more regularly and I eventually began sleeping on the couch in the living room and almost completely avoiding my old room. But this didn't stop the feelings of being watched and the nightmares. I vividly remember waking up drenched in sweat and gasping for air after one particularly vivid nightmare where the black being was above me sucking what I presumed to be my life essence out of me. I lived my life at home in constant fear. I avoided my home as much as I could. I suffered from horrible insomnia. Eventually, we cleansed the house. At first, we tried sage, but that only seemed to anger the shadow people more. They lashed out harder. So, we had a priest provide us with holy water and holy oil. I felt that I would have to be the one to cleanse our home, as I was the main focus. My family saw the beings on occasion, and I don't think my brother saw them at all, so I proceeded to cleanse our home. Things were quiet after I did the cleansing, until one night when I had a new nightmare. I dreamt of a completely burnt man. I could make out every horrible detail in his burnt flesh. He still had his eyes and teeth, and he was just staring at me and smiling a creepy grin. I woke up mortified, but I interpreted the dream as more of a, I have to leave now, but I'm not finished with you. Apologies for the long rambling post, but I thought I'd share. My family home was built when we moved. Before we moved in, the land was covered in trees, and my family purchased 30 acres of woods and creek to build their house, aside from a small house next door that came with the purchase. We stayed there while we waited for the land to be cleared and a home to be moved there. My dad stated a man was murdered in the first home because he was in with some shady characters, but aside from a news article and town gossip, we never found out much. I should mention, there was no activity at the old house, aside from some creepy vibes and sometimes after it was left vacant or when I'd get home from school, I heard voices inside and out, but couldn't make out the words. It sounded like a male and female talking, but they'd be quiet as soon as I started making noise in the house. Also my mum would have strange dreams, but they weren't malevolent. On one occasion, she mentioned she had dreamt a young boy was dead and buried in the back end of our house. Thank you for taking the time to read my post. I have a few more stories about my current home, but as this post is already a novel at this point, I'll leave those for a different post. Shadow Figures Okay, so I have always said, I have seen them since I was five or six. This will be my first time having seen them, and since then, they never stopped. So I used to live in a private house. It was a three-family home, but it was shared with other families. I remember the home layout perfectly well. When you walk in through the door, you have the bathroom in front of you and the kitchen to your right. To your left is the large living room and the bedroom after it. The bedroom was small but it was enough for my small family. It was me, my dad and my mum. We weren't far from stores, like five stores and two supermarkets. Father was at work doing security or EMS. I don't remember too much what he did, so it was me and my mother. 
She wanted to go to the market that day, and I was in the bedroom watching TV. We had a high riser, a bed that goes under the other and pulls out when you're ready to sleep, leveling with the other bed. I was sitting on the bottom one when my mother comes into the room asking if I wanted to go with her or stay home. I am not sure if at the time leaving your child alone in the house was against the law, but yeah, this was in the 80s. Of course I chose to stay home because me, a kid, and TV. So the usual mother-child rules of leaving their child alone in the house. No opening the door. Do not leave the room and just stay watching TV. Me and your father have the key. And I faithfully stayed to the TV after watching her get out of view to the end of the block, which again wasn't far at all. Now I turn and watch TV. Suddenly the TV starts becoming messed up and I start messing with the bunny ears to realize it's not working. I change the channels and it's all white noise. I hear something, my name, I'm thinking mother is back and I walked to the bedroom door. I look back and no one is there. Mother had not come back. Mother had not come back, so there should be no one in the house. I stay quiet though, in case someone was at the door. Again, I'm in the bedroom, and you see straight to the kitchen. I go back and stare at the TV that was no longer showing a picture, but just static, that seemed to have appeared out of nowhere. But I was a kid, so I wasn't sure how TV worked. Again, I heard my name. I turned my head and looked to the bedroom door, staring at it. Hearing my name, I was rather shocked. It wasn't my mother's and my dad wasn't home. Again, I heard my name and there were steps, but it wasn't what footsteps should sound like. It wasn't a pit pat of flat feet. It was the sound of hooves, like a horse, but slowly with caution, as if aware. Thunk. There was one step after my name was said. It wasn't a firm voice. It was more of a whispering call as if luring someone. I stand up and walk again, slowly this time, towards the bedroom door, and look out. Looking straight ahead was the living room, the bathroom and the kitchen. You see half the fridge as it was there casting a shadow from the light that came in from the window. Thonk, thonk. The hoof noises happened again, and slowly the shadow of the fridge moves. I thought someone is in the driveway, moving around until I saw the shadow form. There was no longer a shadow behind the fridge. It was next to the fridge, and there was a shadow image, kinda skinny, the upper body slightly arched forward. The head shaped like a triangle with a sharp like chin and two long pointy things coming from the head but it looked like a person just standing there but not physically but the bottom the bottom was where it got weird the bottom was of two legs but the legs weren't straight they were arched back like an animal's back legs i didn't know what i was looking at but i just stared at it it stood still, but you could hear a horse slowly walking till it was starting to strut faster. My name whispered again as I stood in fear at the door for a split second before running into the room and hid under the bed. I kept there, hearing the hooves getting closer as it was sounding like it was passing the bathroom and just going through the living room, my name still being whispered along the house. I started crying, not sure what was going on, and suddenly, just like that, you heard the keys to the door unlocking it. The hooves stopped, the whispering died, and the TV was back to showing whatever show was on for that channel. When the door opened, I ran so fast and hugged the hell out of my mother. I cried so hard, and my mother thought someone did something to me, but I didn't know how to explain it. So I told her I was scared and she said, 
Well, I told you I was going to the supermarket and you wanted to stay. That's all I could say to her when I didn't understand crap. This is my first memory of what started, of my seeing and hearing of the paranormal. Years later, I had seen the depictions of how religions had seen the devil, and I saw it looked exactly like the image of the shadow that had first appeared itself to me. But by then, I had already seen so much, and admitting that you might have seen the devil at six years old wasn't really on my mind to tell anyone. But yes, my first paranormal experience was the shadow of the devil himself. Shadow Person Encounter As much as I do believe in the paranormal, I don't usually get the opportunity to experience it firsthand. I want to start off with being from Hawaii. There are many superstitions that I still follow to this day in respecting my ancestors and understanding my culture. I work in the film industry, and sometimes where we shoot tends to be in certain sacred locations back in the old Hawaiian days. For example, if it was just me on a hiking trip, I would have done a chant to grant me safe passage. However, this job pretty much disregards those types of locations if it's considered a tourist area. We were filming at Waimea Falls, which has its rich history of the paranormal located on the island of Oahu. As the day was wrapped up, I found out one of the crew members left some equipment back at the falls and I volunteered on retrieving it. It was completely dark and it was a 10 minute drive via quad to trek up the narrow path towards the falls. I had a colleague help in locating it in the forest to no avail. I kept feeling eyes were watching us and we shouldn't linger any longer. We decided to leave and got back on the four-wheeler to head back to base camp. As my colleague was trying to fix the gear, the headlights were beaming our exit. I glanced over to see a shadow figure standing in the middle of our path. Thinking in my head, that's not right, I looked away, hoping it was only an illusion of some kind. I blinked, hoping I wasn't crazy. I turned again to see if the figure was still there. To my horror, the shadow figures stood 10 feet away from me, blocking our path in front of the headlights. Mind you, these lights were on high beam, illuminating the front road, and all the darkness is tucked far back except for the figure. Trying not to cause any alarm to my colleague who didn't seem to notice the figure, I quickly closed my eyes shut and told him to hurry up and drive. He asked me what was wrong but I didn't budge until we were back at our well-lit environment. I felt ashamed for causing a disturbance, even though it was unintentional. I sent a prayer before my departure and hoped the being could remain at peace. But that experience was a shocker for the first time. Thankfully, it didn't follow me home. This incident happened last year, 2019. Unfortunately, I don't have any proof for the fact I was a complete chicken under those circumstances. Mahalo nui loa for reading this and try not to piss off any ghost on your excursions. That was five true creepy encounters with shadow people. I hope you enjoyed them. Thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to the Reddit users who kindly allowed me to use their stories. A link to each story is in the description below. As always, don't forget to like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more content. I try to put out videos every two to three days. If you have any stories for me to read, please send to scarepapa at gmail.com. Thanks again and stay safe.